The High Level Data Link Control Protocol, or HDLC, is an ISO data link layer protocol based on the IBM SDLC, and its purpose is to ensure that data passed up to the next layer has been received exactly as it has been transmitted. HDLC is a data link layer protocol with the following functions. It provides data delivery, error free, without loss, in the correct order, and it also provides flow control. This ensures that data is transmitted only as fast as the receiver can receive it. There are two distinct implementations of HDLC. Number one, we have HDLC NRM, which is also known as SDLC. Then we have HDLC Link Access Procedure Balanced, or LAPB. LAPB is a bit-oriented synchronous protocol that provides complete data transparency and a full duplex point-to-point -point operation. It supports a peer-to-peer -peer link in that neither end of the link plays the role of the permanent master station. HDLC NRM, on the other hand, has a permanent primary station with one or more secondary stations. HDLC LAPB is a very efficient protocol which requires a minimum of overhead to ensure flow control, error detection, and recovery. If data is flowing in both directions, which is a full duplex environment, the data frames themselves carry all the information required to ensure data integrity. We've talked about windowing before, and here the concept of a frame window is used to send multiple frames before receiving confirmation that the first frame has been correctly received. We had the same concept when we talk about TCP windowing. This means that data can continue to flow in situations where there may be long turnaround time lags without stopping to wait for an acknowledgement. This kind of situation occurs, for instance, in satellite communication. There are three categories of frames. We have the information frames, which transport data across the link and may encapsulate the higher layers of the OSI architecture. The supervisory frames perform the flow control and error recovery functions, and then the unnumbered frames provide the link, initialization, and termination. Let's go ahead and examine the protocol structure of the high-level data link control protocol. Here we're just going to take a look at each field and what it can actually convey as far as information goes in this header. The first field that we see here is the flag, and this flag is always set to 0x7e, and that's a hexadecimal value. Next we see the address field. The address field defines the address of the secondary station which is sending the frame or the destination of the frame sent by the primary station. It contains service access point, a command response bit, and an address extension bit which is usually set to true to indicate that the address is the length of one byte. If it's set to false, this indicates that there are additional bytes to follow uh, that represent the address. So that's called the extended address, and this is where HDLC provides another type of extension to the basic format. The address field may be extended to more than one byte by agreement between the two involved parties. The control field. The control field serves to identify the type of frame. In addition, it includes sequence numbers, control features, and error tracking according to the frame type. The FCS, this is the frame check sequence, and it enables a high level of physical error control by allowing the integrity of the transmitted frame data to be checked. For your CCNA exam, you'll want to understand that HDLC is the default protocol in use at layer 2 on point-to-point -point WAN serial links. There are two choices here. You can use HDLC or PPP. HDLC is got a, uh, a little Cisco twist on it and it's, it's Cisco's version of HDLC. They've added something called the protocol field and so it's Cisco proprietary whereas PPP is not. So if you have a Cisco and a non-Cisco device facing each other on a WAN serial point-to-point -point link, what are you going to choose? PPP. Now if you have two Cisco devices interfacing each other, you can use HDLC and they'll communicate just fine. If there's a mismatch on either end of a link where one side's using HDLC, the other side's using PPP, it's not going to work. These are things you'll want to examine to determine uh, what the problem is if you're troubleshooting. If you do a show running config on a Cisco router, your serial interfaces will appear to not have any encapsulation. 
that's because HDLC is the default. So if you're using the default, it just won't show up on those interfaces. However, if you do a show interface serial 0 slash 0, you'll see that you're running HDLC. Now, if you switch to PPP and you do a show running config, you'll actually see that the encapsulation type is PPP in the show run. Very good. We hope you found this video to be of use and that it helps you prepare for your Cisco CCNA certification. We are sure you'll quickly find that hands-on, real-world experience is the best way to cement the CCNA concepts and to help you pass your CCNA exam. For more information on how you can obtain affordable CCNA or CCNP study kits, as well as to find more of these valuable CCNA study topics, please visit us at www.ciscokits.com. The study topics can be found under the CCNA menu, CCNA Study Topics.